warm welcome to Zanis News. I am your presenter Nambula Mwangala and my sign language interpreter is Renard Simkonde. Let's look at the top stories making headlines. Government of Burundi donates to Zambia. Secretary to the Cabinet calls for joint efforts in addressing impacts of droughts. Finsbury Insurance said to invest $30 million in Zambia. Plus, Zambia commits to regional peace. And now the news in detail. The government of Burundi has donated 5,000 metric tons of maize, beans and rice to Zambia. Visiting Burundian President Evariste Ndaishimie says the gesture is meant to help Zambia in view of the drought situation. Speaking when he addressed the National Assembly in Lusaka today, President Ndaishimie said the donation is a sincere gesture from the people of Burundi as a form of solidarity. And the Burundian president has called on Zambian investors to consider investing in Burundi in different sectors. He said within the framework of trade and investment promotion, Zambian investors can tap into different investment opportunities in that country. I would like to say that to take this opportunity to invite Zambian businessmen within the framework of trade and investment promotion to come and invest in Burundi in different sectors since Burundi is still vision in business opportunities. The government has decided to align economic operators and investors on the same front by setting the private partnership DPP system. Right to the rate of speaker and little members of parliament. In terms of peace and security, my country remains naturally concerned about the situation in, of insecurity in the region, such as the situation in the case of Yarsi. Meanwhile, visiting President of Burundi, Evariste Ndaishimie, has assured Sidco Zambia that his country will buy seed from the Zambian firm and ultimately set up a Sidco branch in Burundi. President Ndaishimie was speaking after he toured Sidco Zambia production plant in Chilanga. Details in the following reports. Zambia is one of the biggest suppliers of seed in the region, and today another market has been unlocked as visiting Burundian President Evariste Ndaishimie has assured that his government will buy seed directly from Sidco. Following his visit to the company this afternoon, President Ndaishimie has also extended an invitation to Sidco to go to Burundi to see how the agriculture sector is operating in the country and offer technical support. We now need to assist from Zambia. And, uh, now I saw by my eyes how uh, you said and I'm uh, happy about that. In Burundi, our slogan is each mouth must have food and each pocket have money. So we saw that the base of that is agriculture. It's why all the family in Burundi are doing the agriculture project. So I'm happy to see this in this factory. To be sure that will be your custom. <laughs> Some, you. Many times they told me there is a small quantity, there is, but now I see that you, you have enough quantity. Yeah. So we are happy and, uh, that we will continue to work together. And uh, I take this opportunity to invite you to visit Burundi to see the, the real destination of your seat. The company is delighted to receive the head of state and his entourage and highlighted that the company is ready to supply seed to the government as requested. Uh, he is the first ever president from outside, you know, Zambia to visit Sidco, you know, premises. Uh, he did come with a view to see the operations of this company. He has heard a lot about you know, uh, this company, so it was more for assurance uh, from his side. We have been exporting seed to Burundi for some time, but mostly through merchants 
in between, you know, um, these are entrepreneurs who come get seed and take to, to Burundi. His view is that uh, they would like to be importing seed directly as a government uh, from Sidco, which then would make their seed much cheaper for their small scale farmers in Burundi. They have already, in fact, also offered us some land where they would like us to build our offices and start making trials, seed trials, in Burundi so that we can uh, develop a proper seed industry or a seed company, Seedco, in Burundi. As we are very thankful to Burundi, the president himself and the ministers that came here for their visitation. To us, it's not only we are happy for their visitation, but also happy that we are going to have much bigger business than we have had before. The Burundian president arrived in the country yesterday on a working visit and is expected to close his visit with the official opening of the Zambia Agriculture and Commercial Show tomorrow. Sarah Miti reporting for Zanis. Now, Secretary to the Cabinet, Patrick Kangwa, has called for joint efforts in addressing the impact of the drought. Mr. Kangwa notes that the harsh effects of climate change have negatively affected all sectors of the economy. He has implored the private sector and cooperating partners to join hands with governments in coming up with solutions to mitigate the effects of the drought. He said this when he officially opened the Second Quarter National Coordinating Committee, NDCC, meeting. Mr. Kangwa said there is need to realign resources in the national budget so as to answer to the challenges brought about by the drought. Our urgent and paramount importance is answering the question of how our programming and resource alignment will be achieved to address the drought situation in the country. As we deliberate on the consolidated program performance, for the first and second quarters of 2024. Allow me to highlight that the drought has compound effects that cut across all sectors. Therefore, agreeing on how we deliver programs moving forward is cardinal to Zambia's national development agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to emphasize the need to enhance and further explore synergies with our development partners and various stakeholders, local and international. The drought that the country is facing requires joint efforts with the private sector, cooperating partners and other stakeholders to address its effects. The Food Reserve Agency, FRA, has reaffirmed the government's commitment to boosting agricultural production through various strategic initiatives. FRA Executive Director Mwansa Chamatete says the strategies encompass a range of interventions designed to expand the agriculture sector and increase output. And Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, DMMU National Coordinator, Gabriel Pollen, announced that government has signed a government-to-government -government contract with Tanzania to import up to 650,000 metric tons of grain. The duo was speaking at a joint press briefing in Lusaka today. Government has commended Finsbury Insurance Limited for committing to inject 30 million United States dollars into the Zambian economy in the next 12 months. Minister of Commerce, Trade and Industry, Chipoka Mlenga, has expressed happiness saying that the investment will contribute to the country's economic growth. Meanwhile, Pensions and Insurance Authority Registrar and Chief Executive Officer Namakau Ntini says it is pleasing to see a new entrant into the insurance market. Matani Group of Companies Group Chairperson Rajan Matani disclosed that the company is committed to spend 100 million United States dollars in Sunbird Bioenergy Limited in Kawambwa, Luapula Province. I'm fairly informed that uh, Finry will inject more than 30 million in the next 30 million US dollars in the next 12 months and will create over 50 professional jobs. This is highly uh, commendable. Join me in appreciating Finsbury investments 
our shareholders represented by the group chairperson, Dr. Rajan Matani, for committing over $30 million to Finsbury Reinsurance Limited. We are grateful to your government for creating a conducive environment that makes everyone welcome to do business in Zambia. As regulators, we remain dedicated to ensuring that our market is governed with a proactive approach to promote growth, stability, underpinned by the highest standards of prudential and conduct supervision. Insurance is a global business. And so, over the years, we've seen that a number of players that have been in the market, while we welcome foreign direct investment, a lot of them definitely were coming from beyond our borders. And so when we have a player that is in Zambia to service the Zambian market and to ensure that the risks are retained significantly in the market. Current discourse across the African market is centered on achieving sustainable growth and development. Zambia, like many nations, is significantly impacted by climate change. I already alluded to this particularly the ongoing El Nino effects and resulting in droughts which have devastated, which have had devastating impact across all sectors of our society. This situation calls for a reassessment of the role of the African reinsurers in fostering economic growth and development. Our group is also investing in different sectors of the economy. One such is Sunbird Bioenergy Limited. We are completing now a 100 million US dollar bioethanol plant, unique extraction from cassava in the Kawamba district. This will create about 500 direct jobs in addition to 20,000 outgrowers in Lopula. This project will also produce, at stage one, 38 megawatts of electricity. Our delay on this project has been administrative legislation and the cumbersome blending requirements this project has. But this project will save Zambia over $100 million in foreign exchange in year one and will increase gradually over a subsequent year. We have commenced our investment in a 100 megawatt solar project in Chisanga in responding to the energy crisis of the country. This investment will cost roughly 100 million US dollars and will incorporate batteries giving us power throughout the day and through the night. We take a break. Stay tuned. The issue is a program that looks at topical issues happening in the country. Watch the issue every Friday at 1930 hours, only on Zanis TV, Channel 6 DTT and Channel 458 DTH on Topstar. Don't miss. Welcome back. The Food Reserve Urgency, FRA, has received 20,000 metric tons of early non-genetically modified grade A white maize from Zambef Company. FRA Public Relations Coordinator John Chipandre has clarified that the maize is a fulfillment contained in the contract awarded to Zambef by the government to grow non-GMO early maize under early maize program. Beatrice Mfula has more. Over 50 commercial farmers who are contracted by the government to grow maize under the early maize program in response to drought situation have started delivering the maize to FRA. Zambif PLC is one of the commercial farmers that were engaged to grow the maize and have delivered 20,000 metric tons of early maize at Mwembeshi Food Reserve Agents Depot. There are a great quantity of 20,000 metric tons of non-GMO white Maize has been delivered. At Zambif, our commitment is towards food security, 
and feeding the nation. And at a time like this where we have experienced unprecedented drought season and working with a number of stakeholders and partners, strategic partners together, we have managed to contribute to government's effort. Meanwhile, Food Reserve Agents FRA Public Relations Coordinator John Shipande says FRA is grateful to Zambi for hitting a 100% target of what was agreed in the contract and has urged other stakeholders to be part of the second round winter maize program that will soon be introduced. We are happy and uh, our appeal is uh, to other stakeholders who are players uh, under this program to exhibit the same commitment that we have seen from Zambia. It is a very important uh, program that we are implementing uh, and the whole aim of uh, the early days program as you may be aware is to respond to the drought situation. The maize received under this program will go a long way in mitigating the, uh, the results of uh, the drought situation. Mr. Chipandra says in order to continue cushioning the effects of drought, FRA is still buying maize under the current crop marketing season. Beatrice Infla for Zanis News in Lusaka. In health news, government has handed over a brand new vehicle to the Kabompo District Health Authority to help in the provision of health care services. Benson Witika has more in the following. With the aim of continued improved service delivery, among the different government institutions across the country, government has remained resolute in providing adequate transport in the various sectors. Health authorities in Kabompo District of Northwestern Province recently received a brand new Toyota Land Cruiser motor vehicle to help improve health service delivery. The development has elated Kabompo District Commissioner Herbert Chinyanga as transport challenges are gradually being resolved in his district. Because we had no vehicles, and at least now we are seeing what the government is doing. So we are very much thankful as people of Kabompo uh, for receiving this uh, vehicle. But we have, we have to keep it just so that uh, at least it can stand the test of time. And also speaking during the receiving and inspection of the motor vehicle, Kabompo Town Council Secretary Anthony Kalunga equally had this to say. Transport has been a major issue to an extent where I think home vehicles are broken down, including land, land, land cruisers and the ambulances. So if you're coming on this vehicle, I think it will improve on service delivery. Not only that, I think the district at large has challenges in a problem in the transport in all sectors, where the vehicle, as it comes to our district, it will also enhance and promote and improve on, the, I think on, on, on transportation. So going forward, if we receive more much of such services, I think as a district we deliver service closer and quicker to the people. I think that's what we need to do as well. It comes at a plus because as a council, we're also embarking on the improvement of our roads. So I think the sustainability and longevity of the vehicle is guaranteed because most of the works are the roads are to be left on the Government, with its cooperating partners, will continue to provide the needed equipment and resources especially in key sectors such as health and education, as seen from the continuous procurement of motor vehicles for government institutions in the country. For Sanis News, Benson Whitika, Kabompo District in Northwestern Province. Still in health news, Mamba General Hospital in Sinazongwe District is holding a baby that was abandoned and buried in the sand by the mother immediately after giving birth. Hospital management has continued to provide care with the help of well wishers from the time the baby was dropped at the health institution. Take a look. A 19 days old baby was abandoned and buried in the sand by the mother upon giving birth in Mamba Township of Sinazongwe District. The baby was rescued by a passerby in the bush around Chunga area and taken to Mamba General Hospital where it is receiving care with help of well wishers. Mamba Hospital Medical Superintendent Nyambe Sanyambe has confirmed that the baby is in a stable condition and responding well to health care. On the 11th of July, um, two well wishers came in and brought the baby. According to them, they found this baby abandoned, buried in the sand. So when we received the baby, we did our initial assessment. We washed the baby, removed the soil, obviously because the baby was buried and obviously when people hear the story they you have well wishers who come in so there were these well wishers who came in some brought clothes others brought diapers and we were lucky we 
also had milk so we were able to make some formula feeds for the baby but from the time the baby has presented to us the baby has been in healthy condition the social welfare department is also providing support to the baby while the mother has remained in police custody pending investigations into the matter on the 7th of uh, uh, July 2024 informed us Department of Social Welfare about the child who was by somewhere from the area and that the child was already at the hospital. Okay, so the baby is doing fine. We are receiving help, help food from all well wishers in terms of food, milk, you always have and even clothing. The baby is in a very stable condition. Right while they are reporting in Snazongwe District, Southern Province. The news continues. Minister of Defense Ambrose Lufuma has reaffirmed Zambia's commitment to regional and global peace efforts. Mr. Lufuma was speaking at the official closing meeting of the 25th session of the Namibia Zambia Joint Permanent Commission on Defense and Security in Swakomand, Namibia. We take our last break. Stay tuned. Woman Thou Art is a program that offers counsel to the female folk, sharing real-life experiences and providing guidance to the women and young girls on necessary steps and conduct that will help shape and nature a sober society. Watch Woman Thou Art on Zenith TV every Wednesday at 18.30 hours. On the Topster Channel, Channel 6 DTT and Channel 458 DTH. In education news, Kabompo District Education Board Secretary Josephine Kahanji has disclosed that more than 1,000 girls have been supported by the Keeping Girls in School KGS program in the district. More in the following reports. As a way of promoting academic excellence among learners being supported under the Keeping Girls in School program KGS, the Ministry of Education in Kabompo District of Northwestern Province embarked on the implementation of KGS academic symposiums Kabompo District Commissioner Hebe Chinyanga recently graced the district's first ever academic symposium which was held in Kabompo under the theme, Unlocking Her Potential, Securing Her Future. Over the years, it has been noted that due to the poor academic background and other uh, vulnerabilities that most of the keeping girls in school are exposed to, they perform poorly academically after being enrolled in school. It is against this background that the district has impact on the implementation of academic symposium as a way of promoting academic excellence among KG learners and the keeping girls implementing a school within the district. Josephine Kahanji is Kabompo District Education Board Secretary. During the symposium, she explained. Our guest of honor, this activity, the symposium, is, um, is for keeping girls in school, which is government initiative. In Kabompo District, we have 1,238 girls that is under this project, which is funded by the World Bank. So we really thank the government for this initiative. It has made our learners come back to school. We have those who, who, have, who have had children and who just stay at home. But through this initiative, keeping girls in school, they have come back to school and they are learning. And also speaking at the same event, during a motivation and career talk session to the KGS learners, Kabompo Town Council Chairperson Presley Makai had this to say. There is a part 
in the governance systems to promote acceleration of the education of a girl child. So you, right here, you are privileged to fly higher than where I wish. What I'm trying to tell you is, at the time when you are competing with others, work extremely hard because the world is about competition. KGS is a government and its cooperating partners initiative that provides bursaries to secondary school girls that are drawn from social cash transfer households in selected parts of the country. For the next news, Benson Wichika, Kabompo District, Northwestern Province. Education news continues. The Basic Education Teachers Union of Zambia, Betus, has commended government for conducting a free malpractice examination for both external and general certificate of education in Chadiza District. District Chairperson Christopher Jerry says currently the exams that started last week have been running smoothly as no malpractice incidents have been recorded. Chadiza District registered 730 candidates who are sitting for Grade 9 external examinations and general certificate of education. Yeah, as basic education teachers in Zambia, in the first place, I want to recommend uh, the ministry here in Chadiza, the DEPS office, and the, our teachers for doing a recommendable work because the examinations were instant free, which is very good. And the, if they did it uh, last year, uh, I have hope that even this year they will do the best. Yeah, of, what, uh, of course what is needed is uh, uh, following the guidelines by the Examination Council Zambia, uh, which this district is doing, uh, having security meetings and uh, working as a team, uh, the teacher unions, the ministry, and us the teachers. So what is needed is following uh, the guidelines from the examination. Meanwhile, Lusaka District Commissioner Rosa Zulu has warned teachers in Lusaka to desist from collecting examination fees from candidates and deliberately fail to pay to the Examination Council of Zambia for their personal benefit. Speaking after touring some selected schools to monitor how the General Certificate Examinations, GCE, are going on, Ms. Zulu warned that any teacher who will be found in such acts will be fired. Here is a report. This notice is a sign that someone is securing his or her future by upgrading their levels of education for a better life. However, the recent reports of some candidates failing to sit for their 2024 general certificate examinations, as was the case at Kamlanga Combined School, due to some teachers pocketing the money paid by the candidates instead of depositing it into the Examinations Council of Zambia account, have not sat well with Lusaka District Commissioner Rosa Zulu. Ms. Zulu, who monitored some selected schools in the district, has sounded a stern warning to teachers with such ill intentions. I'm, I'm just warning our teachers in this district that please do not find yourself in such a situation because it will not be good. What we are going to do is just instantly remove you dismiss you because you are not the right person. You are not capable to handle education matters. The district's commissioner was delighted to hear reports from the heads of schools visited that the examinations being undertaken are free of malpractice, as explained by Olympia Park Secondary School head teacher. We do not actually entertain any chances of leakages. Students come from all walks of life, so it's upon us to actually be very vigilant. But luckily, this time we haven't had any um, malpractice during this exam. Meanwhile, the candidates are advised to ensure that their identity cards, such as the national registration cards, are clear of any suspicious alterations. So how do you verify this? Next time, all of you, make sure that when you are coming here, come with proper analysis, okay? Uh -huh. Mijalo Mwemba reporting for Zanis in Lusaka. 
As the Copa Queens are eliminated from the France Olympics after suffering a 4-1 defeat at the hands of German, Kabwe Mayor Patrick Chishala has commended the girls on their splendid performance. Chishala says the Copa Queens did their best to represent the country and Africa considering the stiff competition at the Olympics. Chishala has also called for a postpartum performance for the coach and technical bench. Details in the following reports. Following the elimination of the Copa Queens from the Paris 2024 Olympic Games, Kawe Mayor Patrick Chishala has encouraged the girls for gaining the experience that will make them perform better next time. To take this opportunity, first of all, to appreciate uh, the fact that um, our Shpolo Polo squad, uh, national Shpolo Polo squad, actually managed to go through to go and represent not only Zambia, but to represent Africa uh, in that order. And uh, indeed, I think uh, with me, uh, whatever happened there is a learning curve. And um, I think even the performance itself was quite outstanding, bearing in mind that the teams we were grouped with are those teams which are very experienced and have been there for a long time. The mayor also advised the Football Association of Zambia, FAS, to evaluate the performance of the Tekenko bench. It will be also an opportunity for the coach and the Tekenko bench to go back to the drawing board and uh, uh, have, uh, you know, a, a post-mortem so that uh, they see where they might have gone wrong here and there, especially uh, where reading the game is concerned. And Noel Kasonde, a Tekenko committee member for Kawe Warriors Football Club, shared his view on the Copa Queen's performance. I think basically um, the team had a very, very bad outing when they went to the Olympics in, in Paris. Uh, I think we haven't done very, very well. Our game management has been extremely poor, uh, despite having a lot of good players in our ranks like uh, Barbara Banda, Kundananji. I think uh, only Barbara Banda has come to the party. The rest have been just uh, average. I think going forward, uh, I believe that uh, with the team that we have and uh, the proper technical uh, aspect being brought into the game, I think Zambia can do much better than the way they've done. For Zanis News in Kawe, Central Province, Amna Matama, Liwanga. President Hakainde Hichilema has described late freedom fighter Edward Chipilipili, who died in Serenje, as a torchbearer who needs to be emulated by all. President Hichilema said this in a speech read for him by Mukushi District Commissioner Jonathan Kapungwe at Ndavala United Church of Zambia UCZ consistory during a church service yield in honor of the late freedom fighter. Acting Serenja District Commissioner Peter Ndala said the district has lost a parent. The 79-year-old freedom fighter who was Central Province Freedom Fighters Association chairperson died on Monday at his home in Serenje. President Hakainde Hichilema and the First Lady Mutinta have sent a message of condolences to the Ngosa family on the demise of Matthew Ngosa, who died yesterday, Thursday, 1st August 2024. Ministry of Information and Media Permanent Secretary Tavo Kawana delivered the message on behalf of the First Family to the widow and the mother to the deceased. Mr. Kawana told journalists that President Hichilema and the First Lady Mutinta were saddened with the death of Matthew Ngosa. And former Vice President Nevas Mumba has described the death of Mr. Ngosa as a great loss to the nation. Meanwhile, the Ngosa family have thanked the First Family for sending a message of condolences to the bereaved family. Through uh, to pass. Uh on behalf of His Excellency the President, condolences uh, to the family, to the widow, also to the mother of the late. Uh, you know this uh, demise is one that has saddened many people in the nation, including ourselves. So His Excellency the President and the First Lady uh, gave us uh, instructions to come and pass our sincere, or their sincere condolences and our sincere condolences to the family. Uh, 
and let them know that uh, the first family and the rest of the Zambians are mourning with the family and we have delivered uh, the message uh, to the family. Yeah, we, we've lost a soldier. We've lost uh, one of the most dedicated young people. Um, very diligent in managing the anointing that rested on his life. His music has affected many lives, brought healing in families and in people's lives. And uh, he, he was young, but touched so many lives. Humble family. We are not different from any uh, you know, ordinary Zambian family. Uh, the only thing that has uh, distinct us and humbled us is that we have received the message of encouragement from the first family. As we end the news, a recap of the top stories once again. Government of Burundi donates to Zambia. Secretary to the Cabinet calls for joint efforts in addressing impacts of drought. Finsbury Insurance said to invest $30 million in Zambia. Plus, Zambia commits to regional peace. Well, that's all we had for you on this bulletin. On behalf of my sign language interpreter, Reynard Simkonde, and the entire news production crew, my name is Nambula Mwangala. Thank you so much for watching and continue enjoying the rest of the programs.